Ok, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera semua So, kembali lagi bersama dengan Cikgu Alright, my name is Teacher Siti Zulika And my YouTube channel is Cikgu Siti Zulika And today I would like to continue with the chemical cell Which is 6.2 from the Form 5 syllabus So now, can we go straight to this topic? Alright, first of all, we're going to learn what is chemical cell Alright, what is chemical cell? So, chemical cell is actually made up of two. Okay, it made up of two different metals. Immersed in an electrolyte and connected to an external circuit with connecting wires. So, the first point, there are so many points here. The first point is that they must be made up from the two different metals. And the second point, they must immerse in an electrolyte. And for the third point, they must be connected to the external circuit. So, this is how the chemical cell looks like. First of all, definitely we have two different metals. Right? So, magnesium and copper. We also have electrolyte, copper to sulfate solution as electrolyte. And here we have a wire. Alright, and this wire is for our external circuit. Now, why we put voltmeter here? As we all know that voltmeter is actually to measure the voltage. So, in this condition, we put voltmeter is for that we want to detect electrical current okay ha, that why we put voltmeter and then as you can see here we see that magnesium is a negative terminal while copper is a positive terminal so we are going to learn why is this happen how we choose magnesium as negative copper as positive not a vice versa Alright, why not copper negative why must be magnesium negative terminal so we are going to learn in this chapter now, what is the energy conversion for this simple cell? Alright, you must be able to differentiate between um, electrical cell and chemical cell because there is so much different. For energy conversion for the chemical cell is that energy convert from the chemical energy. Alright, chemical energy to electrical energy okay for electrical cell it converts electrical energy to chemical energy means it it use electrical energy to do a chemical reaction for this simple cell chemical cell we use chemical energy to produce electrical current so i give you some warning here this is a warning for chemical energy the first one, there must be two different metals, which your metals will act as electrode. Okay? And number two, must have electrolyte. Why? Because electrolyte will act as a conductor, which is it allow electric current to flow. Number three, definitely we have a wire as an external circuit and to connect both electrodes. And then number four, we can use voltmeter or ammeter to detect electric current. So this is the warning. This is show the complete set of chemical cell or simple cell. Now we go to the next page. How to choose electrodes. As we all know that electrode must be two different metals. Okay, two different metals. Dia kata dekat sini different. Means maksudnya tak sama. What happen if we use same metal? Okay, if we use same metal, there will not be an electric current produced. There must be a different metal. So, to choose an electrode, first thing you need to refer to the electrochemical series. Okay, this is very important for you all. You must remember, you must follow electrochemical series. So, based on the electrochemical series, as we go up the series, as we go up the series, it will increasing the electropositivity. What does it mean? What happened to the metal on top at the higher position? 
Okay, what happened to the metal on the lower position? So here we refer to my notes here. Okay, higher metal, which is higher position. Higher metal mean is a higher position, lah. Higher position in electrochemical series. Higher position metal definitely it is easy to lose electron, and if it is easy to lose electron. It will become negative terminal. So for the lower position metal, it is very difficult to lose electron. All right, its tendency is actually to maintain it electron. Difficult to lose electron, so it will become positive terminal. So why not we choose an example? We have potassium here, and we have zinc two plus here. All right, I can take this metal, this both metal as my electrode because number one, they have a different metals. They are a different metals. And then second things, we have one metal at the higher position, and then we have one metal at the lower position. So definitely, potassium ion will become negative terminal. Why? Because It is at the higher position of the electrochemical series. It lose electron easily. Okay, and then zinc, since it is a lower position, it will become positive terminal. Okay, so can we choose sodium and silver? Definitely can because there are different metal and different position. But can I use tin and tin? No, we cannot use tin and tin because they are same metal. If there are same metals, there is no tendency of losing electron, so they will not produce an electric current. Actually, as we have the higher difference. Let's say if I choose potassium and sodium, so the current produced it will become small, small current produced. But if I use potassium, if I use potassium, and let's say copper, potassium and copper, all right, definitely it will produce larger current. All right. The higher the distance means, the more the distance between the metals in the electrochemical series, the larger the current is produced. So now let's say we go to the warning. Let I say before cannot be same metal because no electric current will be produced. So now we go to this page. Actually, this page is ah things that happen after sometimes we carry out this chemical cell. All right, so as you can see here, all right, as you can see here, magnesium is negative terminal. Why we choose magnesium as a negative terminal? Because we can see that magnesium and copper. So we have magnesium and copper. All right, magnesium become negative, copper become positive. Why? Because magnesium is a higher. Magnesium is a higher position in electrochemical series. While copper is a lower position in electrochemical series. Okay, so let's see here. Magne magnesium should be here, and copper is here. Definitely, magnesium will become negative, and copper will become positive. So now, back to here. As we know that if magnesium become negative terminal, so the higher the position in ECS, it is easy to lose, easy to lose electrons. So magnesium will lose its electron, and the electron will flow through the external circuit and will go to the copper electrode, and then it will go to our electrolyte copper to sulfate. So after some after some times, you can see that magnesium become corroded, alright, become smaller, while copper electrode metal will become larger, alright. It will become small, become thin, and then this one become bigger, alright. Why is this happen? You can see that magnesium big. Why become small? What happen? 
copper why become big what happened so we're going to learn now right so now first of all i would like to go to the magnesium part first magnesium part so magnesium because it is higher in electrochemical series it easy to lose electron so it become a negative terminal don't forget so what happen if it loses electron once it loses its electron the electrode will dissolve in the in the electrolyte so the change of state is that our magnesium electrode is actually a solid so once it dissolves it will become an an aqueous solution from solid to the aqueous let's see how it works now this is a magnesium state in a solid form in a solid condition so we know that magnesium all right if we put inside the chemical cell magnesium is higher in electrochemical series position so it loses electron easily what happen magnesium will lose its electron for each atom of magnesium it will lose two electrons so once it lose two electron what happen this magnesium this solid magnesium it will become a magnesium ion let's say this is a magnesium in a solid state all right so it will become magnesium ion in an aqueous state plus two electron so this is an aqueous state so this will become all right this solid magnesium will no longer here it will become mg2 plus inside the electrolyte so it means that our solid will become chloride because after sometimes this solid is no longer like this shape it will become like this shape all right this will become like this 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 Okay, so means where is this gone? This is already dissolved as a magnesium ion. Okay, and it dissolved in an our electrolyte. So if there is some more magnesium, if the chemical cell keep continuing undergo its process, next next atom will also be dissolved and it lose its electron, and then what happen? It will become like this. So you can see that there is no longer solid magnesium here. Why? Because this is already dissolved, become an a magnesium ion. Okay. So now we go to copper part. Okay. As we all know that magnesium easy to lose electron. So electron move around the circuit. All right. Go out. to the circuit and then go to our copper electrode but the copper electrode will not receive electron remember that copper electrode will not receive electron the ones who receive electron is our copper to sulfate solution which is the one will receive the electron is the copper ion inside here all right copper ion inside this um electrolyte so as we all know inside this electrolyte we have copper 2 plus ion and sulfate ion so the one who receive electron is actually copper 2 sulfate ion a copper 2 ion copper 2 plus ion so now we go here what happen why become big all right and what happen copper lower in electrochemical series so difficult to lose electron but the one who receive the electron is not the copper electrode the one who receive the electron is the copper 2 plus ion where we get this copper 2 plus ion we get this one from the electro our electrolyte so once our copper 2 plus receive an electron All right, electrode will become bigger because solid copper form and deposited on the copper strip. So this is the copper strip. All right, the copper electrode in a solid form, and we know that inside the electrolyte. So here is electrolyte. Inside the electrolyte, we have a copper two plus ion. We have copper two plus ion. Okay. <coughs> electron travel from the external circuit go to the copper and then go out to our electrolyte 
So what happened? So the electron come here and then pass through our solid and then we'll go to our we go to our copper. It means here our copper will attach itself to this electron. How many electrons? It will attach to two electrons. To two electrons. So once our copper two plus, all right, get the electron. What happened? Our copper two plus in equal state plus two electron and then it will become copper solid. So this copper will deposit it at our copper electrode. Alright, so let's say another electron come and then go to our, oh so sorry, the electron will not go to the electrolyte. The copper to ion will go here. So, okay, what happened is that our copper to sulfate will get electron here, okay. Another electron come and then once our copper 2 plus ion combined with these two electron, it will form another copper 2, another copper 2 solid, another copper solid. Okay, do you get it? So now let's observe this chemical cell, alright. So the first part is that this chemical cell... Alright, we have two different metal here, which is magnesium ribbon and copper strip, which is this is our electrode. Alright, we refer to the electrochemical series. We find out that magnesium is at the higher position. Okay. Mm, Alright, so magnesium is at higher position in ECS. So what happened? Magnesium is to lose electrons. It means that electron will flow through the external circuit and then go here. Now the next thing that I want to discuss with you guys is that can we look at the electrolyte here? Electrolyte that we use is not like the before which is copper to sulfate. Here we use a little bit different which is sodium chloride. And we know that inside the sodium chloride solution, the first ion that we will have is that sodium plus ion. And another one is a chloride ion. Since it is a solution, it means there is a water present in our electrolyte. So water consists of hydrogen plus ion and hydroxide ion. So like I said before, once the electron move from magnesium go to the copper electrode, the copper electrode will not receive electron. Copper, uh, copper electrode will not receive electron. The one who receives the electron is the one inside the electro, inside the electrolyte. But since there is no copper, Alright, since there is no copper, which electron, uh, sorry, which ion will receive electron? So the one who receives electron must is a positive ion. So positive ion inside the electrolyte will receive electron. So we have two different positive ion. So which one will receive electron? Hydrogen plus ion or sodium plus ion? So here we have hydrogen plus or sodium plus. Which one will receive electron? So to investigate which one who received the electron, definitely we need to refer the ECS. So can we go back to our ECS? Okay. So here is our ECS. We know that we have two types of positive ion, which is hydrogen ion and sodium plus ion. Because inside our electrolyte, we have these two types of hydrogen plus ion. So which ion will receive electron? Since sodium is at the higher position, sodium like to lose electron more compared to the hydrogen. So, 
the ones who will receive the electron is actually hydrogen. Why? Because it's at the lower position, so it will receive electron more than sodium. Sodium at the higher electrochemical series, its electropositivity increasing, it likes to lose compared to receive. Okay, so back to our question here. Okay, back to our question here. Who will receive the electron? Definitely, the one who received the electron is our hydrogen plus. So, hydrogen received the electron and after hydrogen received the electron, what happened? You can see that instead of the copper strip become bigger, like we use copper to sulfate, at the copper strip, we can see the bubble form. We can see the bubble form at the copper strip. And the bubble form is hydrogen gas. Alright? Uh, so, at this condition, if we use a different electrolyte, they will give a different results on our observation. So, since we use a sodium chloride, so the one who received the electron is our hydrogen ion inside the water, inside the electrolyte. So, at the copper strip, we will see a bubble form. And the bubble is a hydrogen gas. So now can we answer the question after we understanding this our chemical cell we can see we actually we can answer the question. Who lose the electrons? The ones who lose the electron is our magne magnesium. Is our magnesium. So now who receive the electron? The one who receive electron is our hydrogen ion. So, you can write hydrogen ion. Which electrode is dissolved? Since magnesium solid, it loses its electron. So, magnesium will dissolve, become a magnesium ion. So, the answer is magne magnesium. Which electrode will become bigger? Is copper electrode become bigger? No. No electrode will become bigger. Why? Because no copper deposited. Because we did not use copper to sulfate electrolyte. So is there a bubble form? Yes. So what is the bubble? Hydrogen gas. If the question asks further. So this is how you explain this question. Alright, if we use a different electrolyte, it will affect our result. Remember that. So now next, we go to the next thing. Will electrical current be produced? So how they produce, how do we detect the electrical current? We detect the electrical current from the voltmeter volt reading here. So magnesium and copper, definitely we use a different metal. So if there is a different metal, we can can detect an electrical current. So, electrical current being produced. So, now here is a magnesium and magnesium, copper and copper. In a chemical cell, the condition is need to be different metal. Since, it he, uh, since both are same metal, definitely the electrical current will not be produced. Now, we go to the first question. I have two different metals, which is one aluminium and another one is tin. Which metal will lose electron and which metal is a positive terminal? So we know that which metal will lose electron, we need to refer our electrochemical series. And it must be at higher position. So who will become, who will lose electron? We go back to our electrical chem, electrochemical series. Alright, remember that we have aluminium and we have tin. So, the one who at the higher position will lose electron. Now, we go through the electrochemical series. We can find that our aluminium is here and our tin is here. So, definitely aluminium will lose electron. It will lose electron. 
So, once it lose electron, it will become negative terminal. While thin, it will become positive terminal. So, we go back to our question. Here, which metal will lose electron? Alumi, aluminium. Which metal is positive terminal? Tin. Tips is that you always refer the electrochemical series and determine its position. Now we go to the next question. Mm. Question two. They give you one set of electric, uh, one set of chemical cell, and then the question asks you what metal can replace magnesium. What metal can replace magnesium? Alright, we know that magnesium here is a negative terminal. So, magnesium like to lose electron, easy to lose electron. So, we need to find a metal that is easy to lose electron also. How to find it? We need to refer ECS and the metal must be, must be higher than the copper strip. The metal must be higher from the copper strip than the copper strip. So, we go back to our electrical, we go back to our electrical, uh, electri uh, we go back to our electrochemical series. Alright, which metal can replace magnesium since we partner with the copper? Any metal above copper. Any metal above copper can uh, replace magnesium. Okay, so now can we go to the next question? This is my question. Question 3. Which statement is true about this simple cell? Mm. So, this is your simple cell. And then they give you a copper to sulfate solution. Magnesium, copper. We know that magnesium is higher position at electrochemical series. Definitely, it will become a negative terminal. Easy to lose electron. Remember that. Okay. So, Magnesium accept electron? Definitely no. Why? Because magnesium uh, higher, I write here, higher ECS. Okay, magnesium higher ECS. Easy lose electron become negative. Uh, that is our, our marks there. Magnesium is electron? No. Magnesium excess positive terminal? No. It is a negative terminal. Copper increases in mass. We wait. Copper acts a negative terminal. Also wrong. So what happened? Copper increases in, in mass. Why copper increases in mass? Because we know that electron have been passing from the magnesium. Leaf. Our magnesium will go to our Copper to sulfate solution. So copper to plus ion will receive two electron and will form a copper in a solid state. And the copper we deposited at our copper strip. Okay. Now we go to the next question, STEM question. Can we generate electrical energy from fruits or other plant parts and seawater? Okay. Can we generate electrical energy? Yes or no? Definitely the answer is yes. Why? Because our fruit, plants and seawater, inside fruit, plant and seawater, we have a mineral, ion and X as electro, electrolytes. Okay? So now, you can see here, this is an apple. Nampak tak? We have mineral here, we have potassium, we have calcium, magnesium, sodium, iron, zinc. This is an apple. Now, banana also the same. Banana have potassium, magnesium, calcium. 
sodium, manganese, iron, zinc, copper inside the banana. So, banana also have mineral, carrot. Carrot also have potassium, sodium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, iron. So, plants, fruits and seawater can act as electrolytes. So, this is a seawater component. As you can see here, we have a chloride. Chloride is an ion, sodium, magnesium, calcium and so on. So, seawater, plants and fruit, vegetable can produce electricity. So, this is the hypothesis. Electricity, fruits and vegetable problem and hypothesis. Alright, <clears throat> I thought that fruits will make a little electricity and vegetable will make more. This is the hypothesis. So, how do they set up this experiment? So, here they have so many different soft fruits and veggie. And then, here we have an electrode. Here we have a device to measure an electrical current. Okay. So, now. Okay. What happened? This boy put an electrode. Alright. Poke, poke the electrode on the on the veggie on the in this case in the potato and then it will read how the electrical current is produced how much the electrical current it produced so now you see that this metal has two different metals must be two different metals okay poke inside the apple and then they measure the electrical current so you can see here all the veggie can detect a electric current so they have fruits and vegetables they have some small current it means that fruits vegetable is an electrolyte because they have a mineral or ion inside it and can act as a weak conduct conductor so that's all for today thank you so much for using this module ingat harta dijaga tuannya ilmu menjaga tuannya bye assalamualaikum